I'd like to show you a couple tricks for debugging scroll jank in Chrome. We know that scroll smoothness is really important to the user experience, and users won't use your site as much if the scrolling isn't smooth. So this is just a silly little sample page designed to mimic some of the properties of a real-world website while letting us tweak some of the scrolling behavior and measure the results. You can see that right now I can scroll smoothly, no problem. And this log down here below is showing us the events that can block scrolling and how they're long they're blocking scrolling for. So this isn't too bad. We're seeing 30 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds. Um, in general, you want to you want these to be under 16 typically. We're doing a bunch of painting and stuff for every event, so this isn't too bad. Um, but what if the wheel handlers are doing a lot of expensive work? So let's simulate a wheel handler where every handler is going to do 200 milliseconds of work. How's that going to feel? Ugh, feels like molasses now. And you can see in the log here, it can measure the time that each wheel event is taking, uh, the time from when the operating system generated the event to the time JavaScript processed it. It's blocking scrolling for 200 milliseconds or more. But this tends not to be the problem in practice. You know, sometimes people have expensive handlers, but more often the problem with scroll jank is that there's some expensive work going on in the background. So I call that periodic jank. And this isn't so much that the handlers are, are slow, but the handlers can't run because there's something else expensive happening in the background, usually during page load, initialization, or something like that. So now how does scrolling feel? You can see there's periods of jank and periods of smoothness. And that's uh, what is reflected in the log as well. There'll be some events that are smooth and some that are janky. So say this was your site and you were having this behavior on your site. How would you debug it? First of all, it's with any performance problem. First thing you want to do is open up developer tools and take a timeline. Capture a JavaScript profile. Repeat your scenario, do some scrolling and take a look at the timeline. And we see, sure enough, during the scroll, there's a lot of these long frames. Indication of jank. And if we zoom in, we can look and see what was taking the time. So normally, what you'd want to do is find, find these sources of, of jank. And, and try to eliminate them. You know, I spent 200 milliseconds doing something in JavaScript. Understand what that is, try to break it up, try to defer it using request idle frame, um, or just try to make it more efficient. But it's not always easy to eliminate all the sources of jank from your page. You know, especially if, if, if you're hosting iframes that you don't have control over, uh, or, um, or there's other third-party libraries, you can't always control them. And just because you can't, just because it's hard to eliminate all the sources of jank, doesn't mean that your scrolling experience has to suffer. Maybe we can mask the problem and still have scrolling look nice. So the browser has a feature for this called threaded scrolling. Well, we work as hard as we can to let scrolling run independently from all the JavaScript that's running on the page. So why isn't that working here? Why is this still feeling janky? Well, we've got another feature in DevTools in the console. If we go to the rendering tab, we can turn on show scrolling perf issues. And this basically tells us what are the reasons why scrolling can't run independently from JavaScript. So you see here in the main document, it's saying mouse wheel event listener. Sure enough, if I select an element in the main document and go to the event listeners tab, I'll see that there's a whole bunch of event listeners, including a wheel listener. Now Chrome 51 introduces a new feature called passive event listeners. Um, basically this lets you say up front that a listener is not able to call prevent default and block scrolling. So if we open this up and take a look we can see that one of these wheel listeners is passive but one isn't. And so that means this wheel listener has the ability to block scrolling. And actually you can see this in practice. If we call, if we have the listener call prevent default and we try to scroll, the wheel events come in but no scrolling happens. So you know the wheel event listener has the ability to block scrolling. 
And, and so that's why there's a scrolling perf issue here. Um, also, developer tools now has this feature where we can say, only show us the listeners that aren't passive. So if we have any touch or wheel listeners here, then uh, we know that these are a potential problem for scroll performance. So with passive event listeners, your application can mark its listeners as passive, saying that it's never going to call prevent default. So let's do that. Let's have the application mark its wheel and touch listeners passive. Now you see the scrolling perf issue box went away, and if we refresh the list of blocking listeners, there's no more blocking listeners anymore. The listeners are still here. They're just all passive now. And we can see that even though there's still jank, periodic jank going on on the page, scrolling is now buttery smooth. And we're not getting any events in the log. Uh, even though the wheel events are coming in, they're marked as not cancelable, which means they're not blocking scrolling. So our diagnostics here doesn't need to show them as, as a something that's blocking scrolling. And that's it. So I hope you'll use these tricks. Um, there's a lot more details on how to use passive event listeners in the explainer up on the web incubation community group from the W3C. Um, this gives you some tips for how to how to use the passive event listeners. Uh, in particular with touch you can use them in conjunction with the touch action CSS property so that you can tell us when to disable, when to scroll and when not to scroll without needing to use prevent default. Let me know what you think. I hope this is helpful.